is being forced to fight and they don't have any military skill or knowledge um, they're just being slaughtered you know and the same with the Ukrainians so the sooner we end these wars the better um, is there a link between um, Bel the Celtic god sun god and Baal you know interesting maybe um, we know that the Phoenicians got to the British Isles they travelled so it's possible. Um, I think we can, you know, um, hope that the wisdom of these ancient peoples of the Middle East, be it Africa or the Middle East, um, and Europe, can, can find a way to focus on peace. That's the lost wisdom that we need to recover, because too often the narratives of all these religions have been quite bloody, and warlike, and we've worshipped the gods of war for long enough. That's why I really support my Irish friends that are doing a Lex Innocentium mm. on the 21st of September, um, when I'll be in Britain doing a workshop. I, I hope that we can get across this idea, as Saint Adonan said, that we need to focus on preserving the non combatants But what we're saying is the whole planet is an innocent. We shouldn't be destroying ecology, ecocide, with our war industries and our militarism and our bombs. Um, instead, let's, let's have a philosophical enlightenment, as it were, an illuminatio, as the Catalans say, that we can all live in peace. Um, I believe it's possible, and I will work for that. Okay, we'll finish there. Those are the two. Any questions about these two to add? Only one comments? thought about uh, Egypt. Right. I, I still uh, wonder why uh, nowadays uh, Egypt, Egypt doesn't, uh, to my eye, look like a great nation. The past is so important in mm. Egypt. But nowadays it seems to be a small country. We, we, it's very close to Israel. Why, why we can't hear Egyptian voice? Protesting I, about what's going on in Gaza. No, 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 not even protesting, <laughs> saying something. <laughs> Well, or do, doing a kind of uh, what, what you propose for Europe to do the mediation. Yeah. Because uh, I think they are wise people, but uh, uh, it's a question I, I ask myself, and uh, uh, maybe you, if you yeah. have time, tell me a little what you think about that. Yeah, it's very important. I think Egypt is trying to mediate yeah. the Gaza-Israel um, war. They've got, they've had mediators involved. They're hosting. It's through Egypt that whatever supplies are reaching Gaza are doing it. They're desperately trying to help. Um, and I think, could they do more? Probably. Um, I think they are highly intelligent and committed people. Um, and, I mean, one project I love about Egypt is the new Library of Alexandria, which I would love to visit and maybe organise an event there. My colleagues that came here this summer have been to the Library of Alexandria. It's a place we can use for peace type events. Um, on the back wall, it's got all the languages of the world sampled. And my friend Inga helped design that. Um, so it's a symbolic thing as Peace Druid of Britain. I have a sword with all the names of peace in all yeah. the languages. So I think it's a very difficult position to be for peace um, because it means you, you seem to be doing nothing um, Egypt always um, stood for peace and its, its goddess Maat was justice she is the, the eternal mother Maat um, I think she's still Egypt is still standing for justice um, and as a country it has a long history of Christians living happily with Muslims and Jews in former times lived happily less so now um, I know there are historians in Egypt who, who would be fully au fait with everything I'm talking about. And I've met philosophers from Egypt. Um, yes, I wish we could, I wish we could see more um, and, and do more. The, the, 
the modern history of, e of Egypt is complicated um, and I, I can't remember, I think it was in this book, um, the, you know, the politics of, of Sisi and the, uh, the American influence in Egypt preventing the Muslim Brotherhood coming to power and Hamas began as an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, so there's a sort of phobia about this. I personally would like to see people from the Islamic world in Egypt, who are the greatest intellectuals of Islam, kind of studying my commentary on the Quran, giving me some feedback, translating it into Arabic. And together, I think we should rebrand Islam as a peace religion, mm. which is what it is. The reason Israel gets away with this demonization of Islam is because, oh, they're all crazy terrorists. I think that's a false and a fake meme that Israel has created in order to justify its forever war mm. against its neighbors. If we're going to get a forever peace instead of a forever war, an absolute key component of that has to be rebranding Islam as a peace religion. And that's what my commentary on the Quran offers. And I'd love it to be discussed at Al-Azhar University and researched. I was inspired to do it by Dr. Zaki Badawi, who was a scholar of the Al-Azhar University in Egypt, which is the oldest and best university in the Islamic world to this day. Um, but then we have to do the same with, with Israel and Judaism. We have to rebrand Judaism as, as a peace religion and re-emphasize thou shalt not kill, um, etc., etc. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of work to be done in reinterpreting the Bible as a peace religion and then taking on board the kind of bits in the Bible that, that are problematic and just being honest about this and, and uh, researching and doing a Voltaire on the Bible text and saying this, this bit is just like, this was some crazy guy put this in. And it's not the divine word of God. No, God doesn't smite everyone that doesn't agree with him. You know, that's not the God that we humanity should be worshipping. That's not a God fit for um, humanity as, as, as a whole. It's a tribalistic, particularistic, nationalistic, egotistic God that people like Netanyahu can worship because they're bloodthirsty egotists um, and you know we've got to grow out of that so Netanyahu has to go on his walkabout and go back into the desert and you know come up against the real God of history um, who isn't like that in my opinion so um, so I'm, I'm just a philosopher I give you a philosopher's answer um, if I was into geopolitics, I could explain more about the politics of Egypt and how they're walking on fine eggs, you know. But um, I don't think the answer would... I think Egypt could contribute troops to a peacekeeping operation in Gaza. I think that would be helpful. Um, and maybe that'll, that'll come. But uh, I'm sadly not Secretary General of the UN, so I can't, I can't sort of pick up the phone. And, or I would sort this problem out. See. Um, anyway, we'll leave some mysteries for next week. Okay. So thank you very much for listening, and um, I hope gradually we can we can get some order and reason here in in this. And by the way, the Catalan word for reason, I believe, is ray, r a y, which which is uh, I like that word ray because the word for reason is related to lighting. It is. It's related to a ray. Yeah the radius, and, and even the word art. The word R is meaning to join in Indo-European languages, that which joins an arm also. So the radius joins the center to the circumference of a circle, and reason interconnects and joins everything up. That's the idea behind ratio, which mathematically is joining up, um, you know, different um, processes in mathematical change and so the ratio is what connects them. So that's what reason is and let's get it to work let's join them all up and um, give history a you know a positive boost in the right direction peacewards okay thank you right.